Well, hello and welcome to uh, this week's Cattlemen's Web Update. I'm Dale Nazi, the NDSU Extension Agent from Mackenzie County. We're in a Lee Novak farm here in the Minot area and I'd like to talk about uh, something that comes around every time this about this time of year and that's calving time. Some of you I know have already started calving and uh, a lot of you it's just around the corner. You know, and we'd like to talk a little bit about some of the things that we might start to look for. Um, you know, this could be a time of great satisfaction for ranchers getting that calf crop on the ground, but it can also be a time of great stress. And that's, that's what we'd like to talk about today is some of those stressful times and, and what we could maybe run into in terms of calving difficulty, uh, commonly referred to as dystocia. You know, when we look at, uh, you know, calf losses, dystocia or calving difficulty still is the number one uh, cause of, of calf losses in the cattle industry. You know, there's the obvious thing about uh, having dead calves that uh, don't get born alive, but uh, if we have a high degree of calving difficulty, we can end up with more infectious disease uh, problems. Uh, come to mind, the two that come to mind are, of course, gowers or diarrhea and respiratory problems such as pneumonia. You know, there's a correlation between calving difficulty and the calf's ability then to retain body heat. Uh, the higher the difficulty and stress on the calf, the quicker it'll lose body heat. And that certainly has to do in this kind of weather that we're having this year, survivability of the calf. Um, you know, the more calving difficulty, we have a weak calf, they can't get up, they can't suckle, they, they don't get colostrum in a timely basis. Um, we can have other problems down the road. And then on the cow side, if, you know, if we get into a real dire situation where we uh, have the cow get stressed or hurt, you know, our time to recuperate and then get back in and, and heal up and breed on a timely basis can be a factor. So, you know, maybe our goal should be not just a live calf on the ground, but also think in terms of uh, lowering the stress and the survivability of the calf down the road and the reproductive performance of the cow. In other words, let's try to minimize the stress on both the cow and the calf. Now, we should maybe talk a little bit about some of the uh, stages of calving and, and what goes on. And essentially there are three stages. One is, first stage is probably when the calving process first starts. We see dilation of the cervix and, and contraction start. The second stage would be then as the calf enters the birth canal and is actually born. And then the third, the third stage would be the delivery of the placental membranes. And for today I think we'll just concentrate on stage one and two. I think at this time I'd like to show you some slides and maybe offer you some hints and uh, on what to look for as we go through the calving process uh, and then uh, offer you some hints on maybe how we can correct some abnormal presentations you might see. Before we go on though I think I would like to give some acknowledgments to Dr. Robert Mortimer from Colorado State University and Dr. Brad White from Kansas State University whose uh, materials I use quite a bit of as we put these, uh, this program together. Now I talked about the three stages of labor and stage one is actually when uh, all the things start happening. Uh, the calf will rotate the upright position, we'll start to see some uterine contractions. Uh, dilation of the cervix or, will begin and we might even see the first water sac expelled. Now the cow or the heifer will maybe act nervous, she may be kicking at her side, lying down, you might see some slight straining. You know, in mature cows, we may not even see this. Uh, you know, it could last for two to three hours, and, but it is often observed in heifers, and it could go anywhere from four to six hours. Now, when we get to stage two, of course, the calf enters the birth canal, and that's probably when we start to see the feet and the head protrude, uh, hopefully first, if it's a, a normal delivery. And then we have calf delivery that's complete, and, and hopefully the cow will have strong uh, frequent straining. She'll be lying down. Uh, the water sac and the calf's feet and nose will be visible, and we'll get discharge of fluids as well. Now, in heifers, this can last three to six hours. Uh, cows, mature cows, maybe can last two to four hours. Now, now might be a good time to talk about the three P's of calving. Uh, what I'm getting at is presentation. It could be either a frontward, a backward, or what we call transverse, and I'll show you a, a, a slide of that in a bit. Uh, position, is it right side up or is it upside down? 
Uh, then we get to posture. In other words, that's the relationship of the calf's leg and head to its body. And what we'd want is a frontward, right side up, both legs and head extended into the birth canal, and that would be the ideal. This just kind of gives the uh, illustration of what we would like to see. You can see where the, the front feet and the legs and it's right side up and head and it's all there ready to uh, come out in as far as what we'd call a normal presentation. Now, there's probably four decisions we need to make before we uh, decide to intervene. And one thing is, you know, how frequent are we going to be observing these cows? Some uh, animal scientists would suggest that maybe every three hours we should be checking cows, but we know there's practicality in terms of people that they have time and labor available, so you'll have to do the best you can there. When to intervene is sometimes a big question. We're going to give some hints here in a little bit of uh, maybe some rules of thumb as when to intervene and, and uh, help the cow out. We certainly got to think, can we deliver the calf by forced extraction? Is Or is it too big? Or is it presentation so uh, weird that we can't get it? And then, of course, when to call the veterinarian or some other professional help is going to be the final decision we make. Now, there's a couple of rules of thumb that I'd like to share with you. In stage one, um, you know, if you suspect the cow or the heifer's been in labor for over eight hours, maybe we should start intervening. Uh, as we get to stage two, if the water sac's been visible for a couple of hours and the cows quit trying, uh, we may have run into what we call uterine inertia and, and we're just going to have to physically extract that calf. Now, if the cow's been trying for over 30 minutes and you know it's a, a good effort with no progress, we should maybe intervene. You know, if the cow quits trying for a period of 15 to 20 minutes, um, maybe it's time. You know, cows will take normally take breaks, but they shouldn't exceed five to ten minutes in a normal uh, delivery. So, if they get too long, maybe we should uh, uh, assist her. You know, and if the cow is showing sign of excess to fatigue and stress, or if we observe an abnormal delivery from either the presentation, position, or the posture standpoint. We now, when we talk about extraction with force, I think there's a couple things I'd like to point out. Let's use two-point traction. Uh, Let's go in a natural arc of the cow and her body. Probably only apply as much force as one man can exert. And if we've got mechanical uh, mechanical pullers, let's use them a little carefully and with some prudence. This is kind of what I mean by uh, two point. On the one on the left, uh, you know, it's maybe a one point. Uh, what we'd like to do is get that uh, force on two points, one on each foot, and with even force on you know, on each foot if we can. The natural arc, I think, you know, you can see that there. The natural, this is a physical uh, uh, put, makeup of the cow, and we'll see that natural kind of half moon arc as we'd like to pull. Now we can t use this with a little tongue in cheek. You know, we've we've all had really difficult deliveries. Anybody that's uh, uh, had some experience with pulling calves or assisting cows, you know, they're there is a tendency to want to just get in a hurry. We get excited and we exert too much force. Certainly in this situation where we we can hurt the cow and damage the nerves, uh, certainly we can hurt the calf too. So maybe this, this is just a little extreme. There are some common abnormal presentations uh, that I, we'd like to talk to you and share about a little bit with you today. Um, this is just a list of them quickly. The elbow lock, deviation of the head, uh, retention of limbs, uh, either the hind limb or the fore limbs, uh, breech, and then show you a picture of transverse, what they call a transverse presentation, and of course twin. Now if we get one with the elbow lock, we can see it's just the elbows pulled back a little bit, and it, uh, you know, we can probably correct this pretty easily if we repulse on the head, push the head back in a little bit, and put some traction on that front hoof. Normally that'll come right out, and uh, and then we have the normal normal uh, delivery from then on. If we've got a head back, there's a couple of ways we can do that. We can go in and grasp the muzzle or the nose of the calf, and then uh, swinging the head into the correct position uh, by uh, uh, pulling on the muzzle and hopefully uh, rotating that uh, head into the correct position. There's another way we can do that, and that's by gripping the orbits of the eye. 
uh, the eye socket, in other words, and using that to try to pull the head into the correct position. And hopefully we've got everything coming in the normal delivery. Uh, if we've got a retained forelimb, we want to slip our hand uh, down below the elbow, and then we'll convert that uh, leg up to a flex knee or a carpus position. And then uh, simultaneously, then we'll grab the hoof and move the hoof toward the midline of the calf and knee laterally, and then we'll pull the leg into the extended posture uh, and hopefully a normal presentation from the hands forth. If we've got a retained hind limb, uh, whether it's in a flex position or maybe it's uh, pulled forward, again, we reach in and we uh, try to get a hold of where the hock is, and then you see on number one on the right, get a hold of the hock and then pull that, uh, slide the hand down, and then get it to a flex position. And we're probably going to need both hands then. Uh, we go in with one hand and put some repulsion on the hock, but we use the other hand to pull the hoof uh, up into the birth canal. And of course, once we've got both limbs uh, into the birth canal, then we'll just uh, pull them as we would have normally backwards. Now this is what we call that transverse position where we've got all four limbs and the head and everything coming at once. Um, most veterinarians will say that if, you, if we try to uh, uh, get this calf out. Let's push the head and the forelimbs and maybe even the body cavity back into the cow repulse and then what we've got then is an upside down backwards calf. We're probably going to have to rotate that calf to an upright position which is much easier to do with the hind uh, legs than it is. And if we can accomplish that then we pull it as a uh, backwards right side up calf. Even in the best of situations, this is a tough, tough presentation to overcome. And lastly, you know, twins with one, each one forward and one backward. Um, this is not uncommon. Um, I think what you'd like to do is if there's one closer to the birth canal, uh, try to get that one first. If not, um, maybe what we'd like to do is uh, repulse the one that's coming backwards, uh, push him in, and get the forward one first, and then pull the other one backwards. But uh, you know, sometimes we just get into the situations where we have twins or transverse, and we just can't overcome that kind of presentation. We have to call for professional help. Now, for more information, uh, or if you want to get copies of Dr. Mortimer's or Dr. White's handouts, you can call either myself, uh, Dale Nazi, or John Dubetter at these phone numbers or emails, and we can get these papers and uh, PowerPoints out to you. With that, then, I want to wish all of you a, uh, or thank you for uh, listening today, and I want to wish all of you a safe and prosperous calving season.